I just graduated from the University of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana. Um, I graduated with uh, a science pre-professional major, so I'm pre-med um, currently in my life after um, after I'm medical ready. school application. So that's where that's where I'm at right now. Research lab. Um, I've been doing some different volunteering work in different hospitals and, and areas around South Bend, working in the wound care clinic. It was, it was the summer after my sophomore year that I was um, that I headed down there for the first time, and it was kind of a perfect combination of um, you know, I'd worked the last two years as a lifeguard in Crystal Lake, and I was like, you know, I love it, but I'm looking for something else to do. Maybe you know, with my time, that said, um, come check this out. There's a summer camp for people with type one diabetes, and it's it's you know, you'll get so many hours of clinical experience, and and you know, the meeting has free Chick Fil A, so come out and and see the info session. So it was just that perfect kind of um, company that was, that was like, brings you back. The second year is definitely the kids because um, they're they're really some of the most impressive kids that you'll ever meet just in the sense that there's a wide range, a, a wide range of children from the age of five to 18. So it's, it's a wide variety of kids and they're all, they're all amazing. You see one thing in particular is that the kids just mature at such a impressive rate because they're dealing on a daily basis with a disease that requires, you know, constant monitoring and, and five or four um, different campers that, you know, come together and we do a lot of different activities at camp within that little brother group. And, you know, we do like nightly, like tuck in kind of things where we all get together on bunks and, you know, talk about our days because they're all running around in different activities throughout, throughout the day. So, um, but those are, those are kind of some of the, the people that I'll spend the most time with. Looking, I mean, I was looking at a lot of different schools, um, a lot of different state schools around the Midwest. I, I wasn't sure exactly how far I was trying to go, if I wanted to leave really far or stay close to home. Um, I narrowed it down to my two, my two top schools were, were Vanderbilt and Notre Dame. And um, I wouldn't have necessarily have looked at too much into Notre Dame, actually, if, if my sister hadn't gone there two years before me. So I got put in a, in a room with three other really, really good guys. And, you know, they're some of my best friends to this day. And I, I kept living with them for years to come. So in that sense, I got really competitions that. like that going on uh, between dorms. And it, it kind of brings the dorm together. Uh, Along with other events, you know, every dorm has their own dances and, you know, events like that and their own volunteer events and, and charity. Yeah, South Bend is kind of a, it's an interesting place because Notre Dame, the campus itself does feel pretty secluded in some ways from, mm -hmm. from the city. Um, so it, it's different from, you know, I think a big, you know, school in a large city or something like that, you know, where I think that the social life is more ingrained and intertwined with the city. That was right. a huge draw also to why I, I wanted to come to Notre Dame in, in the sense that when I say, you know, I was around Notre Dame with my sister, a lot of it would involve sporting events, you know, going to tailgates and stuff like that. Um, and, and the Notre Dame tailgating scene is pretty cool. It's kind of a unique thing where uh, most of the tailgating happens right there in the park. Oh, my parents are in town. They're throwing a tailgate or my parents are, you know, having one over here. And so it's that one area where you can bounce around and see a lot of different people and, and, and hang out and, and tailgate like that. Um, in one area so that's that's kind of a cool thing on football game days that I'll definitely miss I think you know my freshman year um, we didn't really we didn't really get into the tailgating scene immediately we were one of the groups that we actually went and sat out in front of the stadium and we were like the front row you know we would paint our chests and stuff like that and we did that for a couple of games so we did that and that was fun um, and then we got kind of tired of being out in the cold with no shirt on works for you um, and able to you know it's the matter of keeping the grades that you want and getting the work done in school, but also having that social life and that outlet. And, you know, there's those nights where you just, you've been looking at a book for way too long and you just need to get out and do something with friends. So there's just basically cubicles where you go up there and that's if you got a paper or something that you just need to really grind out. It's a quiet area. And so I did most of my studying there. If I, if I wasn't in my room studying um, and I didn't really do that until my senior year studying in my room, but most of the time I would do my work up in the study loft and just get it done that hours because they, they do, you know, they always plant flowers. And so in terms of greenery and everything, they make the campus look really, really pretty every single year. And it's a, it's a really nice looking campus in that sense. Um, a couple of the different buildings or places that I would definitely recommend going um, or looking up is the grotto for one is um, there's basically hundreds of candles laid out in this cave and you can go down there at any time and you can light a candle and, you know, a lot of people will do that. I made a tradition of it too. You know, my, my roommate staples like touchdown Jesus, 
which is uh, on the side of the library. Um, it's this big mural basically of Jesus kind of raising his arms and it's called Touchdown Jesus because uh, if you actually stand at the very top of the football stadium, it runs directly through basically the goalposts and you can look out and, and see that. It's just a weird thing where you go from having a lot of success to, you know, you're in these classes where everyone around you is just so smart and you look around and a lot of times you're like, I'm the dumbest one here. In two weeks, I'm actually packing up and I'm moving down to Houston, Texas. Um, obviously, I've had some some time. I've spent the last two summers down in Texas. Uh, it's actually where I met my girlfriend, Emily, who graduated the year before me and she graduated from the University of Texas, has the unique ability for some reason. They're the only state that they have their own application for medical schools there. And so there's actually a law that those medical schools through that Texas application can only take 10% of outside out of family actually moved up to Grand Rapids, Minnesota. That's where I'm at right now. Um, and that's because my dad, he's, he's a Minnesota boy. He was born and raised just outside of Duluth and Hermantown. Still in the cards in the sense that uh, I know that Air Force, Army, Navy, they'll all, um, there's a program where a scholarship essentially that you can, uh, once you get admitted into medical school, you can um, sort of apply for this position where they'll help pay for your medical school and, and you'll essentially go medical school for free but you'll be working in the air force or army or whatever it is that you choose for several years out of out of medical school and that's something that i'm considering i, I really think that i might like uh, you know going to medical school and then obviously if, if i can something that I, I really would think i'd like to do um just because yeah, it is the it is a tradition in my family and not that i feel compelled to do it because it is a tradition but i have seen you know some of the amazing benefits and stuff of it and and sort of seen what the Air Force and the Army and everything that my family members and what they stand for and how, you know, that has made a major impact on how I was raised. I think that, I mean, I could sit here and list every, I could almost list every single faculty member because, you know, all the teachers, especially, they, they did such a great job in preparing me in terms of education and, you know, taking those classes there, um, Spanish teachers, the Tegis and stuff like that. When we would, with, with Miko and everything else, we do all the silly videos and stuff like that. Those are some of the things that I reflect back on the most about high school. Again, when I reflect back at PR, I think most about not the time that I spent in classes, but the time that I spent, you know, out of the baseball field and stuff like that. And, and there's absolutely no denying that Coach Peck and Coach Dean and a lot of the other coaches there um, had a big impact on me, who I was growing up and the person I was because... Carp, did you throw the ball or did you... And he kind of like did this and I... I I was like, I, I did exactly that. I didn't really throw the ball. I didn't commit. But looking back at that, like those are the moments that I think about Coach Peck where his passion just comes through. I, think that, I mean, Miss Palacy, uh, Miss Orsi, you know, Wads, he, all of them, all of them that took the, that taught those AP classes in particular, they, they do a really good job of preparing you. And, and I'm, I'm really thankful for, for how they set me up in that sense where um, I wasn't, I didn't feel shocked when I got yep. to And I think she was pretty excited to hear when both, Kayla and I were going to Notre Dame. I think that that's something that was probably pretty special and I'm sure she was pretty happy to see. Everybody, everybody just